Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about how to do a duplicate stitch. Um, it's still a process I am mastering. This is a glove, which of course gloves, they stretch out, so it is going to have some stretch in it, which that's fine as long as you still see what your design is. But how you do the duplicate, duplicate stitch, well if you're wanting to do this exact project, there is a link in the description of how to do these gloves from start to finish. Uh, but what this is, this is the same concept as when I showed you how to do motif knitting. It, you make a chart. You can get this graph paper really cheap. I think you can get it at the Dollar Tree. But you make up your chart, which this is not an original chart. I actually found this online. If you don't want to have to look for a chart, let me move my camera some. You can go to Google and type in just knitting chart graph and here's a bunch of charts already made up that you can just print out and do and some of them are even color coded there's a lot of really awesome ideas and concepts that you can do uh, for your duplicate stitch this is best to do if you want to do something tiny like if you want to do just one of these little frogs but if you wanted to do a whole ring of frogs like this around something I wouldn't do duplicate stitch I'd be switching the yarns out as I knitted it this, if that's only one symbol, I'd do a duplicate stitch. That, I'd do a duplicate stitch, you know? Just little things like that. Now, what you want to do when you're looking for a chart, let's say you want to do a heart, but you have a smaller gauged item. Oh, no, where's my pen? If you are wanting to do something you can't find the perfect graph for it, these are super easy to make. Get your graph paper. Let's say we have something that is 10 by 10. Okay, let's say you want to do a heart and you don't want it any to be any longer than 10 stitches and you don't want it to be any wider than 10 stitches. So here you go and you just Draw your heart, you know, however you want, and how you do it is you're, you would go through and collar in, I made it a little wide that way, you know, you just draw it, and you would draw it and then just collar in the squares where the line goes through and then you would stitch those squares it's very it's a pretty simple concept now uh, some of you are probably like okay now how do I do this I actually I was finishing up this set which this pattern is really cool because it will match up on the other side but anyway I was finishing up the set for an order and I got down to two stitches left and ran out. I'm hoping that the black will pick up enough. Now with stuff like this, when you're doing matching sets, the hardest thing is to get them in the exact same spot, especially with something like this, because if they're not in the same spot, they're not gonna line up like I want them to, which they don't have to line up like that. I just think that's really neat when they do that. Um, okay, here. Which what you want to do is whatever weight yarn you use, duplicate stitches work best if you use a yarn that is just a slightly heavier weight than the yarn used in the project. Um, that way it will fill in more and it will be, you won't see any of the other collars showing through as much. But with this it's bending and stuff so you're going to see where it's separating. But how this goes, which you copy over the stitches you have. You want to get your yarn. You want to get a really, really long piece of yarn out. I don't have to have a super long piece, but I'm leaving some down so I can weave in in the back. Now for this stitch, this is actually the reverse side of a garter stitch, but a stockinette stitch would look roughly the same. Okay, I think I'm getting a good sheen right there. Okay, so we want this stitch right here to be covered. The way we do that is we go under, oops, 
we go under this stitch, the one above it, because if you look real close, that's how the yarn itself actually goes. Now, and I don't pull it real tight, I loosen it up some. And then you go down through that one. But we need that one above it, so I'm going up through there. And people who are who have done duplicate stitches, duplicate stitches for a long time and you've mastered it, absolutely give us some tips and techniques and just ideas down below because I this is one of the things I'm just I've looked in some books, but I'm just kind of picking it up as I go. Okay, so we got that one covered. Now to do this one above it. I since the background's black, I just go under since I've got this darker purple here. I go under it instead of that whole stitch in the back. And this is something you kind of want to plan at, plan in your head how it's going to look. And then I go back down through there where that one came up. And there we go. That is your duplicate stitch. Now, let me see. I'll take this one, flip it inside out and show you what it looks like, what this one looks like inside out. You don't want big, I don't have any big knots. There's going to be some ends sticking out, but that nobody's going to notice. You just don't want there to be big knots or anything that's going to be distracting or get in the way. And when you go to do it, I like, with this, it's a two-tone project, so I do my outline first but sometimes it's kind of hard because you don't want to go from this stitch over to this stitch. You want to follow a pattern so that you can get as much done as you can because you don't really want to have to cut yarn and start in new spots any more than you have to. Uh, so it can be kind of tricky at times. There's a couple spots where uh, maybe I needed, I done, I had everything, I think I ended up and I had, I'm trying to think what all I had done. I think I was right here, yeah, I was right here and I needed to get to here to finish up this inner circle. These ones were already done. So from here, I just flipped my glove inside out and kind of wove through those stitches to get up to that one so I didn't have one big long string going there. Even though it's not much of a jump, I didn't want that there, so I kind of wove them in through so they wouldn't stick out because that'd be very, I would be very unhappy if I bought a pair of gloves and stuck my hand in them and the first time I put them on, I had <laughs> a big mishap with them. Oop, I gotta take my watch off to. But I'll give you an idea if somebody's wanting to do this exact pattern. I'm leaving that hooked because I gotta. Which, this is how this one turns out. So if they hold their hands like this, it matches up. So here they are. And I made them to where they can be wore on either hand. But that is my take on how, the du how to do the duplicate stitch. Here was my first attempt. And... I really like the purple one a lot better. I think the person who picked out the colors on this, I think the colors are wonderful, which the purple ribbon, uh, the purple ribbon, I think it's just like general cancer awareness. Um, I have a Chiari malformation, so I believe purple, I think it's dark purple. I'll have to look it up. It's either purple or dark blue that's for Chiari malformation. You can look up, if you're wanting to do something like these and sell or give out as gifts, you can look up... Uh, cancer chart cancer awareness chart and you can get a huge chart of all different kinds of ribbons and what the colors stand for and mean and some of them have different color combinations there's hundreds of them all right so i hope this video was helpful to some of you out there i mean it's an easy way to just add a, something a little extra to some of the things you're making whether you are knitting or loom knitting uh one tip I can do it like on a stockinette stitch or if it's a single stitch, but it's a lot harder to do when you're using something like your garter stitch. It gets a lot more difficult. Um, that one I haven't mastered yet. 
I can get it to where you can see kind of like the design, but it doesn't fill in completely. So I haven't figured that one out yet. But this part I've gotten, there's a lot of other things you can do and you don't have to. Okay, so here's your square. Let me zoom this in. Because you don't have to do it just like it says. Okay, so here's your square. What you're doing right now is you're following the stitch for this one and you're making little V's. Instead of doing V's, you can go over top that stitch with little X's. More like an actual cross stitching pattern. You can just do diagonals. Do opposite diagonals. And you can do however you want to do it. And you can create really awesome patterns for it. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. But, oh, wrong way. <laughs> See the paint all over my table? But All right, I do hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share and comment below. And absolutely, people who are a lot more skilled at this than I am, definitely leave us some helpful hints below so that everybody who wants to do this can really get a good start at it and not have to uh it's very irritating when you're doing a project and you frog it and you have to restart and do the whole thing over oh that has been there very 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 frustrating so i wish everybody the best of luck and thank you for watching